Welcome to Brief Government Profile, or as I might change it to Pre-Election Summary, because you know, briefness is very subjective. Here's the roadmap for today. Please do click on the links below to skip to any of these sections. We start with the government structure, which is of a presidential democracy. There are two legislative bodies, the Senate and the House of Representatives. Together, they're called the Congress. And as legislatures often do, they make laws. Most laws, specifically organic laws, need an absolute 50% majority in both houses to be passed. The House of Representatives is the lower house with 166 members. One of their special powers is that in impeachment, they press charges against the president or a Supreme Court justice, among others. The real impeachment, however, happens in the upper house, which has 102 members. Its special powers include approving military promotions, presidential leaves, and war. They also do the actual removing of the president in impeachment. The executive branch is headed by the president, who appoints the cabinet, issues decrees to execute the laws, and leads the military as well. Now to a voting system that I admire a lot. For the Senate, there's just one nationwide constituency where they use proportional voting. Proportional voting here means that if you have more than 3% of the national vote, the proportion of the vote roughly equals the proportion of the seats. Notice how proportional representation leads to a rainbow of parties, not a black and white. It's just so beautiful. However, many raise the point against proportional representation that they like local representation, having people that represent your locality. Colombia is a country of 50 million people, of course. So as Colombia is already divided into many departments, they use these as the local boundaries in elections for the House of Representatives. However, since every constituency sends multiple members and each constituency uses proportional representation, this ends up being a very fair representation of the people's vote, as popular vote taken as a whole ends up being representation of seats in the House, more or less. Another thing that I like about Colombia's voting system is their choice of deciding who gets the seats from the party. Usually what happens is that you vote for a party and when the party gets a certain number of seats, they provide the names of the people for those seats. This is called closed lists. However, Colombia allows a party to have an open list, which means that people can say who the seat should go to, as well as what party they vote for. This allows for even more democracy where party leaders can't just award their friends. For the president, they do the very common first round with many candidates running, and a second round of the top two candidates if there's no one with an absolute majority in the first round. So what exactly is happening in Colombia? Well, they already had their parliamentary elections and the first round of their presidential election. And upcoming on June 17th is the second round for the presidential elections. Next, we move to party time, where we do it a little differently this time. Firstly, we talk about the Democratic Center on the center right, with 19 seats out of 100 in the Senate. One of the two presidential candidates subscribes to this party. Then there's Radical Change, with 16 seats. They're also a center right party who broke away from a more leftist party, the Liberal Party. Next, we look at another right wing party the Conservative Party, a party with a lot of history that formally supports the free market along with traditionalism. Next is the first leftist party in the Senate, however they are the largest party in the House of Representatives. They are the Liberals, a center-left party, and they are the party who the radical change broke off of. Next is the Social Party of National Unity. This is the party the current president is from, and it has done very badly in the elections this year. This party endorses the liberal ideas like welfare, but also supports decentralization. Next is another left-wing party, the Green Alliance. Overall, after the previous election, the right-wing parties hold the upper hand in the legislatures. Okay, that's it for party time, which was reduced in time by popular demand. Now it is time for recent politics, which is increased in time by popular demand. We start in the not-so-recent time of 1964, when the Colombian Communist Party split and the militant wing formed the FARC. Throughout their history, they have been a militant group that makes money through drug trade and has kidnapped and killed many people for negotiation and ransom. However, during a brief ceasefire, the leftist forces had made a political party called the Patriotic Union. This fared mildly successful initially. However, two years later, various drug lords and the government security forces together started an extermination campaign and killed thousands of party members even the presidential nominee for the 1990 election. Other center-left parties were also targeted in this election. However, the government in the 1990s was mostly keen on making peace with the FARC. Entered the president who took office in 2002 and who was a promoter of using strong force against the FARC. There were high tensions, but the FARC was limited. Massive protests took place as some hostages were killed and there were videos released showing the treatment of hostages. The former president of Venezuela, 
condemned the taking of hostages but supported the ideas and the messages of the FARC. Venezuela had always been supportive of the group as they had similar ideas as the Venezuelan state. Later, Colombia, using help of the US FBI for wiretapping, found out that a leader of the FARC was in Ecuador. In March of 2008, Colombia went into the territory of Ecuador and killed him. Ecuador called this a massacre, and both Venezuela and Ecuador mobilized troops against Colombia. However, tensions cooled down. There was another diplomatic crisis in this president's time as well. In 2010, Colombia had evidence that was acquired in the strike that they performed in the previous crisis that Venezuela actively supported the FARC. Diplomacy came to a standstill, and Venezuela even deployed troops to the border, stating that there was a higher chance of military conflict than any other time in the last 100 years. This crisis only ended when the new president elected in 2010 was more focused on compromise with the FARC. In 2012, he announced that he was negotiating with the FARC for peace. In June 2016, the president finally came out with the historic peace treaty. A ceasefire was signed. The FARC was to disarm themselves and turn into a political party. It also pardoned many of the FARC leaders and guaranteed them seats in Congress. The president was later awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for this. However, when this was up for referendum in October, the people of Colombia narrowly voted against it in a massive surprise. People were against it mostly because it was too lenient on the FARC and many argued that the FARC wasn't strong enough to be conceded so much. With some changes, however, Congress and the president came out with a new ceasefire and passed it without a referendum. The threat of terrorism has subsided substantially. The president also brought in a tax hike in 2016 because of the falling revenues caused by the global fall in oil prices. From early 2017, we skip straight to the prediction. There are two candidates. The leader in the polls is a right-leaning candidate who advocates for a hard line against the FARC and corruption and opposes the peace deal. He also supports lower taxes. He is endorsed by the former president of Colombia, who was president from 2002 to 2010. The opponent, who is trailing in the polls, is a leftist supporter of the deal and wants to focus on limiting income inequality. The collapse of Venezuela also puts him in a bad light, as he used to admire a former president of Venezuela and many Colombians associate him with Venezuela as a result. Plus, Congress has been made right-leaning in these elections, so a left-leaning president won't be able to accomplish much. However, this can also be argued in favor of a leftist president, as some may not want to give absolute control to the force-using right of Colombia. The first round of the presidential elections clearly show a significant lead in the right-winger, and the third-placer, who scored almost as much as the left-winger in second place, is a moderate, so his vote is likely to split amongst the two. The few polls that have come out about the second round also show the right-winger in the lead. And I do predict the right-winger who led in the polls and in the first round will become the president of Colombia. So that is the end of this very different episode. Please suggest anything in the comments below. Should I change the format of Brief Government Profile? Should I change its name? Should I start a new series? What should I do? And also subscribe.